we're going to have a look at food tests. There are a whole variety of different food tests we can have a look at. The first one we're going to have a look at is for starch and we're going to use iodine solution. I've got a selection of different foods here. I've got some breadcrumbs from my meal. I had some ham with my meal. I had a piece of cheese. Uh, I didn't fancy an egg but we've got an egg that we can have a go at. Yeah, that's broken brilliantly. God. I haven't broken an egg that badly in a long time. And just to keep me going, I've got some crisps here. And uh, I can have a crisp to keep me going. Right, let's have a go and see what I can do. The test for starch, iodine. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take a small amount of bread. This is just some crusts of some bread. I'm going to take a small amount of meat and a tiny amount of cheese. This is Red Leicester. I've got a bit of crisp and probably the best for the egg is I'm just going to use a syringe because it's extremely messy and gooey and I'll put my egg in like that. Iodine solution. All we need is just a drop of iodine on each one. So we'll put a drop for the egg, for the bread, the meat, the cheese and the crisp. It's a very fast test and we can see immediately we've got a result here. With the bread we've got some black, blue-black colour. The meat is really orange although I'm not so sure I've got a little bit of blue black just at the top so maybe there was a little bit of starch in there the cheese really hasn't changed the crisps a definite change and the egg no change next test is using something called the Bayouret test which is in fact the same as the failings test but used the other way around so what we're going to do is we're going to use Bayouret A which is sodium hydroxide and then Bayouret B which is some copper sulfate and usually uh, a few other bits and pieces put in there let's take a little bit of my bread don't need much. We want a squirt of the sodium hydroxide and we'll put in some failings, some biuret B, the copper sulfates. Now this is a blue colour and if we've got a protein present this is going to turn purple. Well that's definitely blue to me. Let's do one that I know is going to produce a result. This is the egg. This is albumin so it should be protein. We'll put in the sodium hydroxide. The egg doesn't sort of react well with this and then Bioret B, the copper, and we've got immediately some purple being produced, showing that we've got protein present. The meat should do quite well, but I'm more worried about the meat because the meat, although I know it's protein, it's not going to dissolve very well and so I don't know 
really whether we'll get much result from this. So sodium hydroxide in, the squirt and we've definitely got the blue but I'm not so sure about getting a purple because the meat's not going to sort of dissolve well enough. So this is one of the problems with food tests that although I've got a protein here I know my meat is made of protein it's not really reacting terribly well with the solution and that is simply because the meat is a solid. It's always interesting to have a look at some of the other ones. This is some crisps. We're not expecting much with the crisps. They might have some protein in. We'll see. Again, crisps aren't dissolving very well, so not really a lot of effect there. How about the cheese? Cheese is good for you. It's probably got some protein in, but it's got the same basic problem of not really dissolving very well in water or in this case the sodium hydroxide. It might, we'll have a look. And I think I have to say that's going to be a no. So we've done iodine, we've done the test of protein, how about the test for a sugar? A sugar we're going to test with Benedict's solution and it's a two part test. The first part is we're going to add the Benedict solution to these different chemicals and then we're going to put them into a water bath which here is going to be a beaker and I'll put some hot water in here and then we can test to see what's going on. Let's go and put some hot water in. That's better, I've got some hot water now. We're ready to start this test so if I take some breadcrumbs and I'm going to put a fairly good squirt of Benedict's in there. In fact, I think I'll put two squirts in there for good measure. And I'm going to shake up my breadcrumbs in there. And I'm going to put it into a beaker of virtually boiling water. This is a probably about 90 centigrade. And we need to leave this here for a minute or two. While that's cooking, we can get on with the next one to test. So I've got some crisps and a few on the floor. A couple of squirts of Benedict's. And I'll put that one next door. Then we're going to try some meat. Again, a couple of squirts of Benedict's is all we need. A piece of cheese. With two more squirts of Benedict's. And finally, let's look at some egg. A 
and there goes the egg behind. The bread's not doing very much. Doesn't appear to have any sugar in it. Might possibly have something. It's got a little bit of a colour. We've got the crisp not doing much. The next one is our meat. Definitely not doing anything there. Cheese. It was orange cheese to start with and it still looks pretty orange. And then the egg. Give it a good shake. Well, Benedict's is copper sulfate and with this copper sulfate we are getting the purple reaction of the protein but nothing much else. Benedict's is quite an interesting test because if we take some sugar you'd think this one would pass. This is ordinary caster sugar And putting the Benedict's test in for this, you would expect this, which I'll put at the front, to go and react very quickly. But in fact, it's not going to. And although it's got a sugar in it, the Benedict test is not for just sugars, but a special type of sugars called reducing sugars such as glucose. So really what we're testing for in here is glucose and in this one sucrose we won't see any change because it is not glucose. The very first one we did the bread I've got a slight change coming here now very slightly I've got a colour change Really what I'm looking for is a brick red precipitate. So possibly just a tiny amount of glucose present. The final test is looking at fats. And for that I'm going to want some alcohol and some water. In this test we take some breadcrumbs I'm going to add a squirt of alcohol and I'm going to shake this up what I'm trying to do is to get the fat if there's any in there to dissolve in the alcohol and then we can add some cold water if we've got any fat present then that will turn cloudy well the bread seems fairly healthy to me doesn't seem to have much fat in it I'm told crisps aren't good for you let's see how much we've got in there of fat again we've got the problem of dissolving in goes the alcohol crisps aren't well known for their ability to dissolve especially if you get a piece right up the top and water in there not a lot the meat's not going to do much, so the next one I'll do is the cheese. Now hopefully this is my son's full fat cheese. So we might get some sort of reaction. So this is Red Leicester cheese, trying to get it, some of it to dissolve in the alcohol. 
it might and then let's add some water we've got some cloudiness compare that with the crisps and you can see that we have got some cloudiness and the cloudiness there indicates the presence of some fat. I suppose it wouldn't be complete if we didn't try some egg. Mixing egg with alcohol it's one of the reasons why we don't try and do this. Uh, it's not very good. I'll put a bit more alcohol in there. Maybe that will show you the problem I've got. Because the egg has actually congealed at the bottom. It's reacted with the alcohol. And then if I add some water. You can see my lump of egg albumin floating. And it's difficult to tell really whether we've got anything there. It's looking fairly clear to me, clearer than the cheese, although there might just be some in there, difficult to tell. And then this piece of meat, it's got a bit of fat on it, so uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw that in. It might work and it might not. Again, we're looking at the problem of trying to get this fat to dissolve. And that's quite difficult to do. And I'm not leaving it very long to dissolve. Simply because I don't have time. And then let's add some water. And I don't think that's really gone cloudy at all. There's my bread. There's my meat with its bit of fat. And nothing obvious change there. Even though I can see there's some fat on there. So there we have it. We've got a series of food tests. We've looked at alcohol to test for fats. We've looked at Benedict's, which tests for basically a reducing sugar, glucose. We've got the Bioret test, A and B solutions, which test for protein. And back to the first one we did, iodine, the blue-black colour of iodine, if we've got starch present. There you have it, food tests.